The Coliseum has finally arrived in old school RuneScape, ladies and gentlemen, through the Valamore update. This is the latest and greatest challenge in PVMing content, surpassing the Inferno. To put it simply, there are 12 waves in total through the Coliseum. The first 11 waves consist of various NPCs challenging you, and the final wave being the 12th wave, you fight Sol Heredit. I believe that's how you say his name. If you defeat him, you get the Designer's Quiver, which is the new best in slot, cape slot, for ranged. We are not focusing on the final wave for this video as Sol requires his own video when explaining how to do that boss and as you can see I don't have the quiver yet. I have not killed him. I don't want to release a guide on that boss just yet until I've had a bit more practice. So we're going to focus on waves 1 to 11 and I'm going to help you achieve the best results in the Colosseum no matter how good or bad you are at PVM. Before we get into the fun I need to explain exactly what's going on in this video so that way everyone understands what's happening and I don't need to repeat myself in the comments section too much after the video has been uploaded. I'm fairly certain the method I'm showing you here today is the same method that was used by the person who got the first KC in the Colosseum in the game who was Port Kazard, and I believe this method was made by his friend B5. The reason I'm letting you know is because I don't want to have to deal with people in the comments section after the video is uploaded complaining that I didn't give enough credit to Port Kazard or B5 for this tech. I don't give two thirds of a shit who made the tech or who discovered this strategy first in the Colosseum. I just can't be bothered trying to justify my actions to people who have zero success in content creation. So we've got that out of the way. This is the B5 Port Kazard tech to the best of my knowledge. Now let's actually get into learning the Colosseum. Him. Step one, a lot of people have been watching Twitch streamers like Bodhi, Wooks, Molgo Kirby, No Monkey, you name them. What you need to do in this situation is completely forget everything you've watched. You don't play this game full time, you don't have the sort of money they have, you're not anywhere near as talented as they are, you're fucking garbage. Forget everything you've watched on Twitch because you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Now, secondly, all three attack styles seem to be pretty effective in the Colosseum being mage, range, and specifically slash through melee via the scythe. We're gonna completely rule out melee through this guide because if you're not consistently making it to like wave 10 and 11, you don't really need to worry about bringing the scythe with you. And in my opinion, if you choose to use melee within like the first half of the Colosseum, the handicaps that you choose for the waves are slightly more difficult. So that leaves us with magic and range in the Colosseum. Now in my experience, I don't think you should be using magic in here unless you have a shadow, saturated heart, and maybe even at least Virtus, because otherwise you're just not killing things quick enough. The shadow is absolutely busted anything before that, it's just not worth the time investment in my experience. I feel like you'll have a lot more success with range. So unless you have a shadow, you're gonna be using range, but the strategies I'm gonna show you today work the exact same whether you use mage or range. So you don't have a shadow, you don't have a saturated heart, we're going to be using range in this situation. And to be honest, if you don't have full crystal and a bofa in this situation, I don't recommend touching the Colosseum because you're just gonna spend more time chasing NPCs and getting fucked within the first three waves if you have at least Crystal Bofa or better, you can easily make yourself make it to wave 5 almost every single attempt. As you can see, however, I'm obviously going with the full Missouri and Twisted Bow, along with the Venator Bow and Blowpipe. Now, the Venator Bow, I think, is highly recommended. If you can't afford one, it's not the end of the world. But the Blowpipe is pretty important, regardless of Bofa or Tebow. If you have an SGS, that's great. I don't have one on this account, so... I gotta suck a dick. And I've also brought the Blood Ancient Scepter with Ancient Magics, and then the Arcane Spirit Shield for a little bit of tank and mage accuracy. Plus 49 mage seems to do pretty decently here. Uh, the Mole Slippers are best in slot, of course. We don't do anything without them when we've got them on hand, so you boys know what's good. And then over in the inventory, I'm just bringing a couple of range pots, and then as much prayer as I can, fill the rest of your inventory of shit, and you're pretty much good to go inside the Colosseum. I know it's a Blood Fury, but guess what? If you're not meleeing, it's still a Fury. So if you want to comment, why are you using a Blood Fury when you're maging and ranging? Shut the fuck up. Let's go inside the Colosseum, and I'm going to show you how to get it done. Oh, wait. Stop! All right. You got a pre-pot, which I bought with me. However, before I pre-pot, let's set up the uh, let's set up the tiles, okay? You're gonna play on the west-northwest pillar, okay? You're gonna start here. This tile is about six tiles south of the northwest pillar, and then two tiles east. West, sorry, I'm retarded. So if you can mark this pillar and just type start, it helps. This is your set tile, and then this, I think, is your block tile. I haven't tested this one fully yet but I'm pretty sure this can help save your life a couple of times. So the logic here before we start is every single wave you're going to start on this tile, you're going to Blood Barrage on Ancient Magics, the Feminix, and then you run to your set tile. And this is where you can then either freeze the Feminix if you are bringing a mage setup, or if you have a Venator Bow, you can swap to that and start giving them the pew pew in this line while everything sets. The reason this is the set tile is because this sets up your wave 
for complete success and 99% of the time, this is all that you need to do. Now, the reason this method is so effective is because it is the exact same logic as the Inferno. Why does this work? It's because in the Colosseum currently, NPCs cannot spawn next to you. So by standing here, you are forcing NPCs to spawn from the east of these pillars, which gives you enough time to run to this tile and force set the majority of them, hopefully, to the east of this pillar here. And this then becomes basically the inferno. It's the exact same problem solving process. You then basically deal with what can hit you and damage you. And then from here on out, you figure out the best way to tackle what is safe spotted. I'll show you that example now. If you have no experience in the inferno, this is a great way to get your feet wet. I'm gonna leave here, because obviously we didn't pre-pot, and I think that's pretty effective. I'm gonna do my best to keep up with what's happening here at the moment. So we're about to pre-pot and enter the Colosseum, but the most important thing you could do in your life right now is scroll down just a smidge and hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up while you're down there if this guide helped you out, which I know it already has, and we haven't even entered the Colosseum yet. So we're gonna eat our fishy fishy and have a sippy sippy. Grab some extra prayer pots, get the fuck in there. Oh, make sure autocast is set to blood barrage too. That's really helpful. You don't want to go out there trying to donk people with the scepter. First thing you do, run over to your start tile and just put a prayer pot on there. That way it's always on deck when you need it. Start the wave. I think the best thing to do is blasphemy, all right? Prayer is drained by 20% of magic damage received. Makes sense. The other two are kind of garbage. Now, this is where the RNG factor comes into the Colosseum. It doesn't matter how well you do, you can get fucked on these uh, handicaps. Like, you don't ever want to pick Doom. So if we get garbage handicaps, I'm going to just try push through anyway and give you examples of how the waves work. But this is the RNG factor which can really make or break a set. And if you get garbage handicaps and you don't think you can do it, there's nothing wrong with claiming and restarting and going again. Especially once you get to like wave 2 and 3 and it's like still shit. You want to make sure you have a decent run because the first five waves really do set up the rest of the Colosseum for you. So we're going to go Blasphemy first, I think is the best choice. Continue. It's always Mage first because there's only one Major. Drop that potion again. We're gonna hit the Fremnix. I'm gonna run over here straight away. And you kinda of wanna just run up and down here. You can uh, shift click to run through NPCs. And you wanna get rid of the Fremnix as soon as you can. Now, as you can see, the Major is safe spotted because I've gone to the set tile. The reason I, I stay in line with the set tile is because it doesn't matter whereabouts you are, as long as you're in line with it, everything should form behind this pillar unless they spawn too far to the right, then they will, spawn, they will form over here. That only happens when there's more NPCs. So we're gonna go over here now and we're gonna take out your boy, the Serpent. Now, the Catman Warrior double tap's gonna spawn in a minute, which is fine, they just, the reinforcements comes in if you take too long on the wave. That's gonna happen when you're learning, when you're practicing, and when you're teaching. So it's gonna sit here, blowpipe, you can Tebow, it doesn't really matter, Bofa, it all works the exact same. If you've got a shadow, then congratulations, you're an asshole, GZ on the shadow. And the best part is, with this pillar, is the Melia is always safe spotted on this corner and this corner. So it doesn't matter what happens if the, uh, if the reinforcements comes in, and it's the melee ahead especially, you can always run out here, and you'll be safe. Or if I trigger him to come over this way, come out here. Come on, buddy. There you go. He's also always safe on this corner. So this is a really effective strategy to use to help make sure the reinforcements doesn't come out and just declaw rush you to death. This pineapple looking motherfucker will absolutely end your life. So we're gonna clean him up real quick. And then we're gonna run over to the starting tile, put on our mage gear, and choose our next uh, handicap, which uh, they're actually all really garbage. So, um, shit. We're going to go with less HP just for the uh, like, sake of the, the video. I would normally just claim here and leave because um, enemies never missing. If you're not super perfect with your prey flicks, you're going to take a lot of damage. The energy orbs, I don't really think you should be taking this early because you kind of want to use the pillars while you can in early ways. And if you lose max HP, you can't overheal with bruise and you can't overheal with the blood scepter. So, it's just not... Not the most reliable of three. I would just claim and leave. But for the sake of the video, we're going to go with frail, frail, Frailty. Continue. Uh, pray range this time. Get the blood barrage off. Click over here. Now, what you can do, alternatively, is freeze them. And then you can run down here. Now, it doesn't always land the freeze because I'm in mage gear. So you just have to be wary of that. If you're in a Ancestral or whatever and you've got a Shadow, you can absolutely pull that off and get the freeze every time. So I recommend doing that if possible. So come around here now. They're dealt with. You just want to keep moving. You don't want to stand still or, or be walking within two tiles of each other because the Feminists will hit you. But if you keep moving and you run over to the set tile, you can see they're once again set on the east side of the pillar, which is beautiful. It's also worth noting that the Javelin Colossus will throw a, like, Mortar javelin, javelin, sorry, every five attacks. So if you can keep that in mind and you can count, 
You got half the job done. Obviously, the Catman Warrior double tap ain't gonna do shit because he just stands there looking at you like the lemon he is or pineapple. It's probably the best designed NPC in the game. Like, I just look at that boy, dude. Oh, prayer. Look at that head, man. He's just fucking chilling. And the best, part, the thing I love most about this. Sorry for the uh, tangent, but the thing I love most about him is just that there is a face. Like you can clearly see, it is not a jaguar. It's just Jagex peak design right there. This is a good time to uh, take advantage of your heals. If you got the blood scepter, you can overheal to I think 108 HP if you got 99 health. So just fucking sit there and complain about splashing all the time. Wait. Oh right, I chose the invocation that casts mid 90 HP. My bad. Forgot about that. Run over here. Get ready for the next wave. And we've got javelins leaving dirt, exploding boys. Yeah, we've got to go with the reentry. Reentry is not too bad as long as it's only level one. Go over here. Next up. Oh, don't freeze. Blood. Run. Run to the set tile, and then as you will see, just hit this guy, run down, run back up, and see how they set while you're dealing with the Feminix? You now have nothing to worry about. The last one here is range, so we can just pray range, stand still. And now we've got our boy set. Done. Like, it is that simple. You pretty much use that rule every single wave. It's when there's another, an extra NPC, so when the Manticore comes out, you're likely going to be dealing with something on this side of the map. So what you would do here, typically, is kill the Feminix while praying against it, and then start dealing with the Manticore or the Ranger or whatever spawns here. So we're now going to quickly blast through this wave. And what you want to do here, see how the Major is in front, the Ranger's in the back. Once this Ranger dies, it's good practice to just run around the corner and let them sort themselves out. Now he's dead, the Major moves across, and now they're not stacked again. Because dealing with stacks is something I'm going to have to show you in a bit when we get an actual stack. But you can't deal with stacks when you've got a small NPC that is only one tile, and then a big NPC, they will just end up walking next to each other. So... Dealing with stacks is the next thing I'm going to show you when that comes up. And the key thing to remember here is you're just practicing. You're just learning the ropes. So if, you, if you're not preserving the most amount of prayer, it's not the end of the world. Just take your time and just practice setting up the ways. Practice prey flicking. Like you can pray flick your, your offensive prayers if you want. It's not really the end of the world. Just like take your time, practice the ways, get to like wave five and then claim your rewards and then try again and just practice trying to get as much done as you can without taking too much damage. I think that's the best way to just kind of get a grip on this mini game and just to learn the ropes. So we've got here Solar Flare again, Blasphemy 2 or the Reentry 2. Blasphemy 2 is pretty free. Uh, this is going to be Manticore and a Major. So we're going to pray Mage pretty much right now. And we should go straight into the Blood Heal. Look at that. Perfect. Come over here and let them set. Done. Problem solved. Pray melee because that's the last Fremenic. And we're done. Stand on the set tile and then because it's a single tile shaman, or NPC, sorry, they won't stack up. It's a free fucking wave. Done. If it was any other NPC in here, uh, it, they would stack up, obviously. But because shaman is single tile, you just stand there and let it rain. Now, you know how to deal with the Manticore. It's one tick each. It's just like Leviathan. It's range, mage, melee, or it's melee. Sorry, or it's mage, range, melee. You just have to pray flick in between and make sure that you're clean about it. So just pray range, mage, melee, like that. That's all. And it's the same uh, for the entire wave now, but next wave it could be different. It's random every time. I'm not sure if it alternates. I think it alternates, but that's all you do. Just pray. And as you see, one is shot at you. You just switch pray. It's like uh, doing Cerberus, ghost. As soon as one fires, pray for the next one. And you're pretty much good. The Catman Warrior double tap will just stand there like a lemon. And take on the ass, and we're gaming. <laughs> oh, forgot to pray. If you're going to use the uh, SGS or like Ancient God Sword to heal, just be cautious, like moving into melee range of NPCs, just in case. But you should be fine for the most part. That's wave four completed. Now it's wave five, which is Manticore, Mage, and Ranger. This is pretty much the last challenging wave you're going to have. And then here, right now, it's pretty free. Unfortunately, these are all dog shit. I don't want permanent javelins. I don't want to reduce my health by another ten percent, and I don't really want the energy orbs either. But I think for the sake of content, we're going to go energy orbs anyway. And Manticore does a lot of damage. So does the Ranger. So we're going to blood heal. Just hit the Ranger. Fuck it. And go straight to set. And you see how it's now these two. Oh, hold on. Let me figure this out. Two seconds, boys. Make sure you keep on top of the Manticore. Get rid of these boys. There you go. All right. Keep on top of the Manticore. Go. Oh, too early. Doesn't matter. All right, there you go. All right, we've got the Manticore sorted. We need to get rid of the Manticore before the boys spawn. I think if you stand on this block tile, I'm pretty sure 
that the, ma the major will block the melee from coming over. So I'm going to start brewing just in case. Notice how these two are not set because the big boy's in front. We need to deal with that in a minute. Oh, okay, the block tile doesn't work. Abort all babies. But luckily they're off tick. So the major, then the melee hits. Notice that? See how the major attacks, then the melee attacks? That's fine. Get rid of the major first. If you can identify that really quick, which by practicing the Colosseum you'll be able to, then you'll, you're like halfway through the Inferno. If, if that, you're like 90% of the way through the Inferno. Just identifying when things are off tick and then flicking your prayers accordingly so you don't get cleaned up. Because the Catman Warrior will absolutely one-shot you with two hits. Hit this boy. So that was actually a bit of a spicy spawn. I think if I got to the set tile earlier, the Colossus would have been on this side, but I think I was too slow running to set. So you don't need to always like use the... Uh, like blood heal from the start, especially when the Fremnix are too far away, but that's just the learning curve. That's how you practice. Things like that happen is what it is. Now, with sets like this, you're going to want to put your Tebow on or your bow or whatever. Work it. We're going to wait for the ball to come past, but what you're going to do effectively, this rule applies for every single piece of content that is set up like this when they're stacked, like the Inferno, Colosseum. If you have anything stacked like this, you hit the, you stand against the pillar, you pray against what's in the back, you click it, you step out, and he's now one tick out of sync. So it's going to go mage, range. That's the same rule, no matter what content you're doing. Same thing in the Inferno, same thing in the Colosseum. If they're stacked up, you stand against the pillar, and then you click the thing in the back. Whatever's in the back attacks first, whatever's in front attacks second. That's simple. Make sure you have run on, you stand in the center tile, you step out, you do damage. That's the best way to set any sort of wave. Doesn't matter. The rule is the same regardless of gender. It never changes. So if you keep that in mind, you have pretty much got yourself an Infernal Cape and a Quiver all in one. And that is how you deal with stacks. It's that simple. Doesn't matter what. Oh look, the exact same reward two ways in a row. How fucking garbage. These rewards could be better, but that's not what we're here for. We are on wave six now. We're just going to keep going and we're absolutely going to take the bees. Yes, please. This should be double ranger. Which is going to be a bit spooky. Look at that. That's a beautiful fucking spawn. Holy shit, Batman. Look at this. Getting the set tile. Run down here. Hit him with it, put on the Mage Prey, and we just have to deal with the Major. Look at that, boys. Tell me this is not fucking pod racing. Look at that! Look at it! This is beautiful. This is what we want. Alright. Now, this boy in the back, a bit of a problem. But it's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to wait for the reinforcements to spawn. That's it. That's the only thing we want to watch out for here. When the ball's coming, run through it. Because the Melia is coming, the Major's at the back. This is beautiful. This is what you want to do. There's nothing wrong with waiting, because that Major being there fucks up everything else that these guys have going on. Alright, gonna pray Melee and come down here because the bees are coming. And the bees, they be speaking Vietnamese. Hit them with the fucking spec. This is beautiful fucking... Bah, 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 bah. So, what do you do with this stack? Notice how everyone's just kind of chilling. There's uh, nothing to do, like nothing you can do about this here. What I recommend you do is you throw on your long range bow, you stand up the back here, praying range, sorry not mage, and you just kill the Colossus Javelin. Because what this does is the Major can't hit you, so you just sit here, looking pretty, doing damage. Now he's going to throw his Javelin in a minute when he does that. Step in here. Oh, that was too slow. Stop! Okay, ignore me. I'm garbage at the game. Probably want to step in a little bit earlier, and it should hit there. I've not actually tried it before. That was just a guess. So maybe it doesn't. Learning curve for us all. Look at that. Even I'm learning in my own videos. Come out here. Hit the Javelin guy. The Major still isn't doing any damage. The problem is this Tebow is made of fucking hot garbage. So we need to make sure that we can do some more damage here, please. What we're going to do, you can alternatively step in now. And it's the off tick, right? So, oh, hold on. I've got two rangers hitting me. Fuck me. That was too much. But it's range, mage. There we go. All right. Hide behind the pillar again. The mage is going to come around. And that's just how you solve that wave. I did that. That was really sloppy. I ain't going to lie. That was uh, just me being garbage heat of the moment. Now, how do we deal with this set here? Remember, we do have this ball coming around the pillar, and if we off-tick them, it'll actually be fine, because it'll be like a range, range, mage, melee, range, range, mage, melee, but we can actually put them on the same game tick if we just step back one tile, because now that you step back one tile, they should both come out at the same time, I'm pretty sure, and hit me with the same attack style. So if I step out and go mage like that, we're gaming, okay? Hit the guy at the back first, Mage, range, but then you just have to watch the manticore and it's fine. 
That's it. That's all you got to do. And you just pray range the rest of the time. And you'll never have a problem. There you go. All the way. We're going to get a javelin in a sec. There you go. That was uh, bad. Hit the bees real quick. Got to be careful of the bees. There we go. So it just requires a bit of concentration and just like remembering that you just have to follow the manticore. Like obviously I made a mistake there trying to move around. You've got to watch out for the javelins as well. But as long as you, if, if you set them up on the same tick and you just watch the manticore, you can pretty much forget that the other guy is there. You just have to obviously remember the, the mortars every five fucking attacks, which is really annoying. Get on this tile here. That's wave seats completed, and for the sake of keeping this video kind of short, that's essentially how you just are going to solve every single wave. It's going to be the same process all the way to wave 11. You're just going to have extra mobs and a lot more pressure and worse RNG as the waves go on, but that's just the learning process, and everyone's going through that when learning the Colosseum. So I don't really have too much else to explain at this point. I'm just going to speed up the footage now and try to get to wave 11. I really doubt I will because of the choices i've already made with the handicap and these aren't any good either like i don't really want permanent javelins doom is fucking horrendous and frailty at 20 percent. i'm just gonna have less health which i'm probably gonna pick that one so best of luck to me and yeah let's see how far i can get i might just pull out at wave nine anyway we'll see what happens good luck oh actually i just wanted to acknowledge one more thing that's a big boy! This guy is a fucking unit, dude. Look at him. He's a fucking... Mm, he's a fucking big boy. Now, he heals everything. So, just be fucking careful. And also, worth noting... Hit that. You can step out to, I believe, here. And he won't come around the corner. So, you've got a bit more wiggle room when dealing with waves with a big boy but yeah he'll absolutely heal the shit out of these guys if you try taking them on now i know i said i was going to speed up the dialogue but i'll just explain what i'm going to do here because some people might be confused by this layout i'm going to step out to the north because the major and the major attack of the mana court will be on the exact same game tick which is huge for us so we step out and we're gaming like that just pray major the whole time and then flick with the manticore and the best part is that other major doesn't do any dumb shit like the javelin guy does he just fucking games dude when the bees come in, just hit the bees real quick. There we go. Wave sold. Uh, excuse me. And now the boys are set up. Now, obviously, I know I said I was going to spit out the dialogue, but one last time, just so you guys can confirm that you know what's going on here. We're going to get rid of the bees real quick by coming down here. Can we hit it from there? We cannot. Be very careful with that. Shoot the bees. Okay. Bees are dead. Stand in the middle. Pray what's in the back. Shoot him. Mage. Range. Done. Step out here so we don't have to worry about the ball. Mage. Range. Done. Look at that. Easy game. And then when the javelin comes in, just step. One tile. There you go. Wave 8 is the same thing, but with two javelin boys. I'm going to go with level 2 bees. Back to back, these rewards are a fucking joke, man. Back to back Snapdragon seeds. Only one, sure. Oh my god, I nearly died then. I accidentally stepped out here, and uh, that caused the ranger to fucking stick a jab up my bunghole. So, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna wait for the Minotaur to spawn and slowly deal with that. This is a good spawn, and you see how they're set again? It's beautiful. So we need to get rid of this guy. And then we take out the Mentor. Mentor's got high mage levels, so Tebow works great on him. Venny Bow is great for this sort of content here. Big bounces. I know I was like, oh, I'm going to speed up the content so you guys don't have to worry about what I'm doing. And it's just like, I'm just here narrating what's happening anyway. My bad. Doesn't matter though, because he's a big boy. Bah! Right. What do we do here, boys? Well. <laughs> uh, let me figure this out. Hold on. I could be wrong, but I don't think this is solvable. So... What I'm going to do is get rid of the bees, I'm going to pray range, and I'm going to run to this pillar over here. And that should then make it solvable. So I'm going to pray range, and then flick to melee when the manticore hits. The reason I'm doing that is because then I've only got to deal with the mage attack from the manticore. So if I run now, out, back to pray range, and I should be sweet. And then they should come and set themselves up here now if I stand here. 
just like that that's beautiful see the manticore is going to come around this is how you solve that wave you're in that problem you run to another pillar throw on the fucking vebo for a sec to get rid of the fucking bees dude that's how i would solve that i don't know if it was solvable any other way to be honest i think i think i need to sit there and think about it because i'm, I'm kind of just running my brain as fast as i can for the sake of the video but i'm pretty sure that wasn't off tickable without getting fucked because of the way these two were set up but now these guys are the same attack style so it doesn't matter dude on the same game tick beautiful it means the javelins don't stack Oh, don't worry, they're on different jazz cycles, that's cringe. Obviously, I'm uh, not going to make it to wave 11, considering I've got zero fucking restores left, because I didn't bring enough in, and I keep misclicking. But I believe wave 9 is double manticore, and that is the first of, like, the really difficult waves. 9, 10, 11 are the ones where you kind of... You're, you're probably going to die unless you get a decent set, and you've got some decent handicaps, so... We'll see how we can set it up, and we'll go from there. I'm going to go with permanent jabs just because we're probably not going to make it and it's only one javelin colossus but two manticores so <laughs> good fucking luck all right he's dead awesome so i'm actually just going to blood heal off the minotaur i don't care because this would be a wave set and we'll be able to move on to wave 10, provided I don't fuck it up anymore. Yep, I love that the bees are dead and they're still fucking me. Yep, cock. Good. Pretty much full health, right? Step out here. So manticores stay the same on each wave. So if there's two manticores, they're both going to have the same attack pattern. So you just step out. Bam, bam, bam. Hit him with the bow. Try to get the fucking bees if I can. Beautiful. I should be able to just pray my way into wave 10. So as you can see, this method of just using this set, uh, the pillar, is actually pretty decent. That block tile you could probably ignore. I think it only works if the major spawns in front of the melee. So we'll actually get rid of that. Fuck the block tile. Oh. Good tank, because I did not pray that correctly. Holy shit. Venator bow, big investment. I would buy, especially now that it's not being merged for the Colosseum. You can uh, probably get away with uh, buying one for about 50 mil again, rather than 100. Right, wave 10 for eight rune warhammers. You gotta be, what? It's a big money, dude. Jesus Christ. Double javelin, double manticore. Wave 10, arguably the hardest wave in the game. Obviously, other than the boss. And I think we're gonna go with bees three. Because why the fuck not? The healing totems are so cringe. Beast 3 it is. We're gonna die. Good luck. Oh yeah, we're fucked. For sure. Curvy. It's curvy. Who could eat anything without a kick? It's curvy. It's curvy. This is obviously we're not gonna, you know, kill the final boss with this setup, but like... I mean, this is going to bring us to wave 11. We're pretty much in the territory of looking to bring the Scythe in, ready to start dealing with Sol. I don't know if I'm going to go for it on this account, though, because I don't really play this account much anymore. I don't know if I want to invest that much time into learning it. I think I might just fucking... Dead. Dude, I'm a fucking tank. No way I just did that. That's huge. All right, we need to be careful here, because these guys are going to start doing permanent blobs. So we're going to come down here. Let them stack up their jabs here, hopefully. There we go. Look at that. They're stacking them. Beautiful. And then we're pretty much going to be set. Because that major, remember, can't reach if you stand back here and range. So we can just spend all day fucking around. Too bad the bees are not healing me anything. Get a couple more heals off. Deal with the Manticore. Wave 11. This is the strat. That's all you need. Get to wave 11. Bit of problem solving. Bit of practice. You can do this too. Trust me. It's that simple. Works with the Bofa, works with the Shadow. If you're milling, you just got to be a little bit mindful of like what you choose. Because like if you have too many permanent stacks, you're just fucked. You have less room to work with. Um, obviously, the orbs are a bit more of a problem that you got to deal with. Oh shit, I killed him. Fuck. Wave 10 complete. No unique. Instead, we have Onyx Bolts. Garbage. Um, I don't have full health. My bad. Fuck. So, we're going to give Wave 11 a crack. Probably going to die. We're going to go with Blasphemy 60%. Because it doesn't matter. By then, we're dead. This is going to have one Javelin, two Manticores, and one Shockwave. And the Minotaur and the Serpent are going to come out. So, if we do this, uh, we're going to go like this. 
We should be able to set that. Yeah, that's death right there. They were... There's a lot going on there. That's uh, unfortunate. I probably... Hmm. Don't know. I didn't really see what was happening on the other side of the pillar there. But I think... That's a mixture of bad handicap, bad plays, and bad luck, really. But, I mean, we made it to wave 11. That's actually a new PB in uh, Glory. Look at that, 19,000. Let's fucking go, dude. How many benefits have we, un we unlocked? We everything except the salute. That's fucking solid. There you go. Free herb patch. You guys can do it too. Any questions, I will be live in the description down below. You can come to the live stream. Those are my times. Like That's my schedule. Happy to help. Happy to hear about your success. And if you've got any questions or you want to help me even, you're more than welcome to join me. My name is King Condor. Like and subscribe. Keep yourself safe. This is the easiest room in the raid. It's quite simple. You got a big boy. Look at him. God damn. Fuck me. Look at that boy. It's huge.